In this video, we're going to be talking about the parts of a lab report. We're going to be talking about that in other videos too, but here we're going to be focused on the research question of a lab report, the independent, dependent, and control variables. The objectives are that students will be able to identify the independent, dependent, and control variables in an experiment and use the independent variable, dependent variable, and control variables to write the research question of the experiment. So to start off, we'll go straight into the definitions. The independent variable in an experiment is the thing you control and change. The dependent variable is the thing that is affected by what you change. You measure the effects of the independent variable on the dependent variable. One way that I like to think about this is that if you're an independent person, you don't depend on other people. You can choose what you do and when you do it. So that's similar to the independent variable. The independent variable depends on nothing else except for your choices. You control what the independent variable is, what the value of that variable is. The dependent variable in contrast is like a dependent person. It depends on other things. It depends on other factors in your experiment. Specifically, it depends on what the independent factor is doing. And this is what you measure. This is what you're looking for the effects on. You're looking at what or you're looking at how the independent variable affects the dependent variable in your experiment. If that's confusing, I can show you a few examples of experiments and talk about what their independent and dependent variables are, and hopefully that will make it a little clearer. Let's say that you're analyzing how heat on a stove affects the time it takes water to boil. So you're turning the heat up on different pots of water and seeing how long the water takes to boil in each pot, depending on the heat. Here, the independent variable would be the amount of heat that you're providing on the stove. If you turn the heat up, you would expect that to change how much time the water takes to boil. But how much heat there is only depends on your choice. You can choose how much you turn the stove up or down. And so because the only thing that depends on is you and what you're doing, we'd say that that's the independent variable. It's what you control directly in an experiment. The dependent variable here would be the time that it takes for the water to boil. That's affected by the heat. It's affected by the independent variable. So if there's more heat, you would expect the water to take less time to start to come to a boil. Because that time takes, or because that time depends on your independent variable, we would say that that's the dependent variable. And it's also the dependent variable because it's what you're measuring in an experiment. You're seeing how much heat um, or how much time water takes to boil based on the heat. So you're analyzing the time that water takes to boil, and so that would be the dependent variable. Another example could be, let's say that you have a remote control car, and you're seeing how the time it has been running for affects its position. So you'd expect that as the time gets bigger, as more time has passed, the car would have traveled a greater amount of distance. Here the independent variable is time. It's the amount of time that you're allowing the car to run for. So if you allow it to run for a greater amount of time, it's probably going to go for a greater amount of distance. But you choose how much time you allow the car to move forward for. So because you choose that time, the time would be the independent variable. The dependent variable would be the car's position because its position will depend on how much time it has been moving for. If you allow it to move for a greater amount of time, it will have covered a greater amount of position in that same time. So because the position depends on how much time it has been moving for, we would say that the position is the dependent variable of the experiment. One more. Let's say that you're watering plants and you're giving different plants different amounts of water to see how high they grow after a certain amount of time. Here your independent variable is the amount of water that you give the plants. You choose how much water you give each plant and that amount of water doesn't depend on anything except for your choice. So that's the independent variable of that experiment. The dependent variable here is how high the plants grow. That does depend on how much water they get. So 
if the plants grow higher or lower only depends on the water. So it depends on the independent variable. And since that's what you're measuring and analyzing in the experiment, you're analyzing how high the plants will grow based on different factors. That's the dependent variable of your experiment. So hopefully that makes those definitions a little clearer. Okay, next we're gonna talk about control variables. In an experiment, a control variable is anything that you keep constant to make sure that it does not affect the results. In an experiment, the only thing that you care about is how the independent variable affects the dependent variable, nothing else. So if something else is affecting the dependent variable that you don't know about, you may assume that it's the independent variable that's causing it, which would lead to a misunderstanding. So you wanna keep everything else constant in an experiment outside of the dependent and independent variables. If anything else in the experiment is possibly affecting your results, that will lead to a misunderstanding. So all those other things that you have to keep constant are called control variables. They're things that could vary, that could change, but that you're controlling, that you're preventing from changing. I'll give you a few examples of these in those same experiments. So if you're doing an experiment where you have containers of water that you're heating at different heat levels and seeing how long each one takes to boil, one thing that you would want to keep the same is the initial temperature of the water. If you start all the waters at the same temperature, then the only thing that will affect how long they take to boil is the heat. But if you start some containers of water very hot. If some start off already being very close to boiling, it's going to take less time for them to boil than other pots of water. So if you start all the water at different temperatures, that would affect the results and would basically make the results of your experiment meaningless because you wouldn't know whether the water was boiling because of the heat or because of the temperature that it already had going into the experiment. So a control variable in this experiment could be the initial temperature of the water. Another control variable could be the altitude that you do this experiment at, because you may know that different altitudes make water boil at different temperatures. So you'll have to make sure that you do this experiment at the same altitude for all the boiling pots of water. Otherwise, that would be something else that affects the time that it takes for water to boil. So those would be two things that you control in an experiment and make sure that they're not changing and staying constant so that the only effect on your, in, on your dependent variable is your independent variable. If you're doing the example of a um, toy car and seeing how far it goes in a certain amount of time, one thing you'll wanna make sure of is that the toy car is staying on the same terrain the whole time, that it's not going up hills or down hills, it's not gonna hit a wall. Maybe you're using the same toy car multiple times rather than toy cars with different speeds. Those would all be examples of control variables, just things that you keep the same to make sure that the only thing that affects the dependent variable is the independent variable. Finally, if you're watering plants and changing the amount of water to see how that affects the height, one thing that you'll want to keep the same is the amount of sunlight that each plant is getting. If you keep one plant in the dark and the other plants in the sun, that one plant won't really tell you whether it was the water that was affecting it or the amount of sunlight that was affecting it. Either one could affect the height. So you'll want to keep everything else the same. Another possible control variable could be the dirt that the plant is growing in. If you give some plants like sand to grow in, they'll probably die pretty quickly because they don't have nutrients. And so that would affect the height and it's something that would affect the height that isn't the independent variable. And so since the only thing we want to affect the dependent variable is the independent variable, everything else like the soil or the amount of sunlight has to stay the same. Another obvious control variable here would be that you should probably use the same type of plant because if you're using different types of plants, they probably grow at different speeds. So it's not the water that would be affecting that. It's just the type of plant that you're using in the first place. Okay, last thing you need to know is the research question in an experiment. The research question is the question your lab is trying to answer. Your research question should always ask, how does my independent variable affect my dependent variable? Every lab that we do in physics has a point to it. There's always a single thing that we're investigating. 
we always have to go in trying to answer a certain question because if we don't we'll just be basically playing with the lab materials we won't be getting specific information and we won't have anything to guide our investigation and show us what we should be looking for so the research question helps us understand what that is and the research question should always be phrased basically how does my independent variable affect my dependent variable so a research question for our first experiment could be how does the heat of a stove that a pot of water is placed on affect the time it takes for the water to boil a research question for the toy car experiment could be um, how does the time that passes, um, or excuse me, how does the amount of time that passes affect the distance that a toy car has traveled? And the research question for the watering plants example could be, how does the amount of water that a plant receives affect its height over time? All of those are basically, how does my independent variable affect my dependent variable? That's always what you're fundamentally asking in an experiment, and that's what you'll be expected to write on future lab reports. And that's it. This is the conclusion. This is all the information we went over. I'm not going to read these through again because I just did. You can pause the video now to take notes. Otherwise, that is it. Thank you.